Hi all, today I'll be reviewing Rayman Advance for the Game Boy Advance. I'll be playing it on my DS. Just put it in. And um, it was released in 2001 and um, it's original port from the multi-platform game released in the 90s and now to show you some of the five main attributes of this uh, game in the with gameplay videos. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Okay, first of all is story. Well, this uh, the story is basically um, there's uh, a guy who tells you what's going on, but there's a peaceful valley or a peaceful kingdom, uh, which everything's uh, life's quite good, peace and quiet, and it gets disturbed by a man called Mr. Dark, who um, steals the Protoon, which are the people who live there, um, and locks them in cages. So yeah, Mr. Dark steals the Protoon, um, you have to save them later in the game. They lock them in cages, and uh, basically they turn to Rayman for help, and you've got to free the Protoon and defeat Mr. Dark. So that's basically much of the storyline. It's not the best, but it's not the ba worst either. So, okay, moving on to design. Uh, personally, I thought the level design in Rayman Advance was uh, quite good, despite being 2D. Um, the levels were quite simple, uh, although sometimes a bit challenging. It's good that there's a mixture. Uh, I thought the bot the cages and the puzzle elements into finding them uh, made the game uh, have more depth. And I thought the obstacles um, used were and the enemies were well spaced out. One level I did like in particular was Bandland, the one shown up here. Um, I just thought it moved quite smoothly and although it was quite hard it was also fun and not impossible. Um, this was one of my favourites in the game and um, I think this is, just shows how good the Rayman Advance is for a Game Boy Advance game. One thing I did find quite frustrating was some of the uh, boss stages which weren't um, that easy and took a few times to get used to and before you could defeat them. So, moving on. Okay, next is graphics and sound. Uh, to be fair, for a Game Boy Advance game, the graphics and sound were not bad and although uh, it might not look good on the video, it was on a small screen and at the time, for its portability reasons, this probably was a breakthrough game and it looks pretty much the same graphics wise to the original port though the sound is a bit muffled and the um, quality is not that great but it's listenable so um, yeah it was a I was quite impressed by that that was one of the uh, best parts of the game I thought okay moving on okay next up is the uh, controls uh, I thought the controls were not bad well to be fair there aren't a lot of buttons on the Game Boy Advance but I thought uh, it was quite easy to control um, there's no kind of buttons that are far apart everything's quite close together and accessible by one hand and um, I also like the power-ups and um, how you have to unlock uh, new uh, powers like punching and hanging I thought that was quite good and um, added some challenge to the game and aimed to complete it and um, I also like the helicopter Control. Everything was quite easy to control though. Okay, finally, um, overall comments. We'll start with the good elements of this game. Uh, they were well designed levels um, straight from the port, uh, good Game Boy Advance graphics, a uh, good balance of obstacles and enemies, and fairly easy controls to master. Uh, the bad, uh, not as many, but it can be frustrating at times. Uh, bad sound quality. <laughs> gets on your nerves, the music sometimes, and the story was fairly average, so overall, 8 out of 10, um, this is Matthew for Level Guide, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.